move on to our best and worst performances as a reminder to all listeners or viewers. This isn't just straight up the best performances or worst performances of the week. These are the ones that look like to, to be the most impactful best and worst performances. We're starting off best. Jamar Chase getting back on track. 10 targets, 7 catches, 132 yards, 2 touchdowns. There was, there was some concern for Jamar Chase building for him as he struggled uh, to really put up any fantasy numbers lately. There were concerns about how he was being used. And uh, hopefully no one ever panicked too much here on Jamar Chase. He's an elite talent. And he yet again showed us why today. Yeah, I tweeted before the week um before the games this week that like his stat line this year was eerily similar to Deontay Johnson's like still getting volume just not really doing a whole lot with it and it was just the role that he was kind of thrust into for whatever reason was a really short yardage target guy like I get the I get the idea of like get the ball in his hands and see what he could do but he's not yeah. like a Tyreek Hill where you can throw him a two-yard screen he's gonna run a total of 250 yards around the field <laughs> yeah. and somehow only get like a 30-yard gain out of it like he's a guy like yes if you get him the ball like we saw today he can break a tackle get into the end zone yeah but I my our subscriber league I'm so happy that he finally is doing something because I'm like <laughs> I was get, I'm two and three right now looking to be three and three after this week sorry Nate um <laughs> but Chase coming back in a big way is helping a lot of fantasy teams and I do know sadly there are a lot of teams who have panicked on him mm. and um I, I hope you didn't panic too hard. I hope the returns for him were still very good. But this is why he's in your lineup every single week. And this really isn't that different than what we saw last year at times either. Like, there were times last year where yeah. he would just disappear for a couple games. Yeah, I was getting DMs from people on Twitter asking, like, basically about trading for Chase. And they're, like, getting offers. Like, uh, I remember one particular, someone had the offer of, they trade away their Dalvin Cook for Jamar Chase. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I make that trade. Yeah, easily. Very, very easily. Like, that's one... Where if I can get some of those running backs who still have a lot of name value, if I can get them off my roster for some of these guys, you know, that's something I'm probably going to do every time. But I hope if I hope if you were in the league with somebody who panicked for Jamar Chase, about Jamar Chase, I hope you were on the receiving side of that panic and you were able to pull yeah. off a good trade to get him on your rosters. Yeah. Moving on to our next best performer, Matt Ryan, showing up, showing he still got a little bit left in the system. 42 of 58, 389 yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions. Played extremely well against the Jaguars defense, which has been playing pretty well this year, better than anyone expected. This was a big day for Matt Ryan, not something I don't think anyone saw remotely close to coming. Seeing as I bet, I, he's probably my most rostered quarterback too in super flex leagues. And I think I benched him basically everywhere. <laughs> so of course. Uh, you're welcome, people. I, I've got a few of those this week. Um, mm -hmm. So you're welcome for the Matt Ryan breakout. But yeah, I mean, I watched most of that game. That game was um, probably the one that I caught the most of. And, and when you have the connection to Michael Pittman working, that just keeps that offense moving so smooth. You know, he's getting the volume. Deion Jackson, obviously coming out of the backfield. We talked about him. Like, if you're able to get those seven, eight yard dump offs every single time, that's it's as good as a, you know, they don't call it a run through the air for nothing. Like, it, it's it's super valuable. Paris Campbell had a good role. Alec Pierce obviously had the huge catch at the end of the game that did a lot for them. Like, if, if that kind of thing is happening, Matt Ryan shows why he is still worthy of being rostered at least in two quarterback leagues and why yeah. he still, you know, can put up quarterback one numbers at any time. Yeah, it was it was nice to see Michael Pittman get the bounce back game. He had a couple down weeks. Uh I know that Michael Pittman is someone I thought of very highly coming into the year. So Same. I was starting to, you know, sweat it a little bit that we had a, some down weeks, but it's good to see him get back on track. Yeah, I'll take I'll take 13 134 pretty much any day of the week. <laughs> Absolutely. Now it's time for some somber news. Elijah Moore, no targets today. We're dropping Elijah Moore, right? Yeah, I already have pretty much everywhere that I have him. It's 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 one of those things where he's an, he's a very talented football player. I think in almost any other NFL offense, he would be doing things differently. But it's just the system doesn't fit him, or Zach Wilson doesn't fit him, or Joe Flacco, like. There, it's too many things at this point. Like it just to, I'd rather him just sit on waivers. If uh, you know, God forbid, an injury happens, like maybe he's somebody I consider picking up. But like, I dropped him yeah. this week. I started DJ Moore instead. 
I somehow made the right choice. <laughs> yeah, incredible like, that that was the correct decision. Yeah, that. Oh, ooh. yeah, but I mean, it's just it's again, it sucks whenever you see a guy that is super talented. We've seen him be successful in the NFL. Was very successful in college. Just he's just gone. He's just running wind sprints. Yeah, it was like I want to. I like I wanted to believe for redraft. I, I continue to want to believe because he's too talented a player for this to continue. It's what, like you said, it didn't make sense. So when something doesn't make sense, like I can't come up with a reason, a real reason why. I want to still believe in the talent, but we're now at the point in it where I'm just going to say, doesn't matter that I can't understand it. It's it's happening, and I just have to understand that 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 it's happening. Yeah, and it's like it's he's running. Some of the most routes in football that may change after this week, but he was tenth and or ninth in routes run coming into this week. Like he's out there every play. It's and told this week, obviously he ran like sixty eight ish, sixty four, sixty eight percent of the snaps this week. But like, just what is he the <laughs> fifth? Is he the fifth read on a fourth yeah. on like a play that's got four reads? Like I don't, I don't get it. Yeah, and I do do not care that Zach Wilson only threw the ball 18 times this game. It's irrelevant to me because zero targets is an issue. It's just a problem. Yeah. It doesn't matter if he only threw 18 times. Even if he had his season target rate or target share of 15%, if he had 15% of 18 targets, I don't even know if that math's possible, but <laughs> if he had three targets, I'd be less worried. If he had two, if he had a target, I would be less yeah. worried. But a guy of his caliber and what we all probably spent – what sixth, seventh round draft capital on to just yeah. be a zero week in and week out? Like it just, I cut bait a couple weeks ago, and if I was holding on to any hope at this point, it's gone. Next worst player, Aaron Jones, nine carries, nineteen yards, four targets, three catches, twenty five yards, no touchdowns. This offense looks pretty bad. Uh, it's an offense that I mostly faded all offseason, although I had some interest in Aaron Jones and to a degree, A.J. Dillon. But this is a problem. <laughs> like, Because we we were able to rely on Aaron Jones for most weeks. But, but seeing this kind of a game for him in a, in a game in which you would expect the Packers to be able to have some success offensively, or at least be in the game enough and have Aaron Jones involved enough for him to not be a dud for you, this was concerning for me. Yeah. I I mean, I'm not I'm not as worried about him as I am a lot of other players if they were to be in the similar position. Like I still think he's going to get a role. He still, you know, is getting targets. Obviously, there was always going to be some concern with him being in like a near 50-50 split with AJ Dillon and that was especially prevalent in this game. Um though maybe some of that was the fact that like Jordan Love came in. I don't I didn't see I didn't watch the end of this game. Um so I don't know, maybe Dillon just played, you know, all of the snaps from a certain point of the game on. But like it's just it, that's kind of always what Aaron Jones was, though. Like, the people that I know that have always faded Aaron Jones, it was like he would have stretches like this where he'd put up, like, he'd get a lot of touches, and then it'd be, like, seven points. I, it's just kind of who he is as a player. Like, if this offense isn't moving, it's normally one because Aaron Jones isn't moving, but also he's not the guy, like, he's not a Christian McCaffrey where he's going to stomach the entire load and can break a, you know, a 50-yard run or a 50-yard reception off at the end of the game. Like... It's just, he's not a superstar. He's a very good player. So I'm not worried, but it's like, it obviously sucked if he was in your lineups. But like you said, I I have a couple Lazard shares in best ball, and that's really it. Maybe I should really just extend my concern, as I mentioned, basically, the, the offense in general. Yes. And because, you know, they throw the Packers throw the ball 45 times today, 41 of which by Aaron Rodgers who continues to be just an awful draft pick this mm -hmm. year. Um, and only 10 points against the Jets. I mean, the Jets have been playing well, but, like, you don't expect Aaron Rodgers to only put it below 10 points up against the Jets. And, you know, when he throws, when they throw the ball this many times, Aaron Jones only sees four targets. Like, that seems like a mistake. Maybe that's just a mistake on the Packers' yeah. part to not try and get him involved well, more. I don't know. I don't get how you're playing a team like the Jets – when you know that you, let's be real here, your best wide receiver is, I'll say, solid. He's above <laughs> yeah. okay, but he's yeah. not quite good. Sauce Gardner, as a rookie, one of the best corners in football already. Mm -hmm. I don't think yeah. that's even hyperbole. I think it's just very true. DJ Reed is playing very, very well. I don't, and, and that's why you see Tanyan, who had a good game, who we'll, I know we'll talk about him in a little bit, but like, 
Tanyan has 12 targets, 10 receptions, 90 yards. And then the running backs just have nothing. Like, how are you not running? Run a bubble screen to a wide receiver. Run wheel routes with your running backs. Like, get them in motion. Get them moving. Get some disconnect yeah. possible out there because you're not beating those two. You're not beating DJ Reed and Sauce Gardner with Alan Lazard and Romeo Dubs. You're just not going to do it. And that right. is why Lazard had his 35 yard touchdown. That was great. That's it. Dubs, yeah. four catches, 21 yards on nine targets. Like, he's not a good route runner. He's not surprising <laughs> Sauce Gardner with anything. Like, there was a couple routes that I saw where I was like, I could have ran a better route than that. Like, it's just. <laughs> I don't get how you look at the offense and like, how are you giving, how are you giving this many targets to this many bad players when you have guys like AJ Dillon, who even I'm not the highest person on AJ Dillon in the world. Like, how is he not more involved? How is Aaron Jones? Like I'll put all of them back there. Just run a constant two back set and have one block and one run a route and just alternate it and figure it out. Like, I feel like that'd be a more effective way to use the offense. I and mean, we've talked about it a lot. They're two of the better players on that offense. You'd think, they want to have them involved all throughout the game, but we're still not quite getting still getting enough of it. Especially when like the offensive line is is like I don't want to call it bad, but it hasn't been playing well. Like there's just some, like I just don't get how you don't get a little bit more creative. And that's always kind of been my knock on Matt Lafleur. Like he's never going to be the most creative guy. His, his offense, like his teams, are never like. They're never the, you know, they're not, not Brian Dabble who's running Saquon direct snaps mm -hmm. like 10% of the time. Like they're not using, like even Luke Getze, like obviously formerly in the system, like he's even come up with some more creative plays than anything that I've seen the Packers run this year. Yeah. Like it's just, you got to do something different. You can't just, Aaron Rodgers, great quarterback, one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. He can't win games for you at 39 with no wide receivers. Yeah. Yeah. 